Hello everyone, Brewmaster here with another great ale review. And this is my friend Danny reviewing with me tonight. We have um, something that I'm thinking is going to be pretty special for you. Um, this is Arrogant Bastard Ale from the Stone Brewing Company. Um, Stone Brewery is in es Escondido, California. Um, this particular ale was first released by them in 1997. It comes in at 7.2 ABV and normally I don't read a lot of the labels and I'm going to do more than one stone but and they all have like a book on the label <laughs> yeah. for you to read but this one is just hilarious so I'm going to read it really quickly try to stay with me. This is an aggressive beer you probably won't like it. It is quite doubtful that you have the taste or sophistication to be able to appreciate the ale of this an ale of this quality and depth. We would suggest that you stick to safer and more familiar territory, maybe something with a multi-million dollar ad campaign aimed at convincing you it's made in a little brewery, or one that implies that the tasteless, fizzy yellow beverage will give you more sex appeal. Perhaps you think multi-million dollar ad campaigns make a beer taste better. Perhaps you are mouthing your words as you read this. <laughs> At Stone Brewing, we believe that pandering to the lowest common denominator represents the height, the height of tyranny, a virtual form of keeping the consumer barefoot and stupid. Brought forth upon an unsuspecting public in 1997, Arrogant Bastard Ale openly challenged the tyrannical overlords who were brazenly attempting to keep Americans chained in the shackles of poor taste. As the progenitor of its style, Arrogant Bastard Ale has revealed in its unprecedented and uncompromising celebration of intensity. Uh, there have been many nods to Arrogant Bastard Ale, even outright attempts to copy it, but only one can ever embody the true nature of liquid arrogance. The ingredients? Nothing but the finest barley, most aggressive hops, clearest water and proprietary yeast strain, and abundant arrogance. Um, questions or comments? If you don't like this beer, keep it to yourself. We don't want to hear from any sniveling yellow beer drinking wimps because this beer wasn't made for you. <laughs> and if you look closely at the picture here, let me get it turned around there, it says right here at the bottom, you're not worthy. You see the gargoyle there with his uh, pint? It's a very interesting bottle with a very interesting story. Let's yeah. get a pour and see what <laughs> this stuff tastes like oh, yeah. and smells like, of course. <clears throat> Hold on, let me uh, let me show you the cap really quick. If you can see that, it says, Hated by many, loved by few. I'll be saving this bottle just because. It's a sweet bottle. <laughs> yeah. When I hear you're not worthy, I just think of... Uh, oh, uh... Wayne's World? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, dude. My brain's slowing down. We've had a few brews tonight already. <laughs> Ooh, that... Oh, man. I must say, oh, looks look at that. amazing. Oh yeah, I can smell the hops already. Um, like I've said in previous videos, this particular glass that we're using, we're both using, they have different logos on the glasses, but we are both using the same style of glass. They really promote an aggressive head. Yeah, they. Um, sure you can do. you can try to be gentle, but even then, they they really will give you a crazy aggressive head. Um, now this head is very thick, very very creamy. I mean, you can look at these. It's uh, what color would you say that head is? Uh, it's a light tan for sure. Uh, definitely a, a bit creamy looking. Nice tight bubbles. Very tight little bubbles. Um, there's not a lot of carbonation, but there is some. You can see some bubbles rising from the bottom. Now this is a very dark amber color. Yeah. Um, let me see here if I can. I'll get a little light on this so you can see it a little better, but it's a really, really dark amber color. Can't see it very well, but it is really a, like a really dark amber, almost even a, uh, like a, almost a brown. It's so dark. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you can probably see it's got really good head retention. Like Danny said, it is very creamy. I mean, if I could show you that, that is so very, very creamy. Very head. frothy. I mean, it's just very frothy, pillowy. Um, let's get a nose on this. See what it smells like. Oh, very hoppy. Yes, yeah, very nice. You can smell a lot of uh, hops. 
definitely like a cascade. Yeah, it's got hop. like a cascade hops mm. scent, definitely. Um, like a whole cone hops type smell. Oh yeah. I don't know how fresh this is. Um, Reminds me of a, of a good IPA. I mean, let's see if this has a uh, date on the bottle. And uh, that I can see, it does not. I have to uh, investigate that because I'm not sure oh. uh, how to tell the dates on these. But it smells really fresh. Very um, citrusy. Yeah, very citrusy. There's a little bit, a tiny bit of a malt smell. Yeah. Just a, enough to sweeten that that uh, the bite of the hops just a little. It's got a good floral scent to it. Yeah, it very much does. Very floral. Mmm, it smells really, really good. Yeah, like a lot of citrus fruits. Yeah. Like some whole cone hops, a little bit of a bitter smell. Just a little bit of, uh, a little bit of malt. Let's go ahead and taste this, see what this one tastes right. like. I'm pretty well <laughs> thinking it's going to be great. Oh. oh, yeah. Very hoppy. Those hops hit you. Yeah, that's, <clears throat> it's kind of a combination. It's mm -hmm. very hoppy, really, really nice and bitter, but it has a little bit of a sweet maltiness to mm -hmm. kind of counter that. It sure does. Um, there's definitely like some citrus fruits. There might even, honestly, I kind of get a little bit of a taste of like some dark fruits. Mainly just that really crisp, stout, hoppy uh, bite. The malty uh, mellowness, a little bit of sweetness from that, and that bitterness rides it out. From oh, the uh, yeah. from the hops, this is is really really tasty. This As you can see, really I mean that good. head just doesn't go; it just sticks there. I mean that's it just stays. That's the, that head is not receding at all. Um, I might have some lacing if I could <laughs> get the head to go down. Yeah. We'll see as we drink this, but I, it's looking like that is one of the best heads I've seen. One of the best head retentions, anyway. I mean that's still looking like. A pretty solid three fingers. Mm, yeah. I just definitely think straight up really good amber IPA. I mean, like a red IPA kind of taste to it. It's just really, really hoppy. It is. And see, um, we recently tried that uh, Sierra Nevada flip side, which is a red IPA. And this is pretty similar. I think this is a little more stout tasting. Mm -hmm. this, a little more alcohol to it, so it thickens up the mouthfeel a little bit. This is definitely yeah. on the heavier side, I think, of medium mouthfeel. I think it's got a bit more sweetness, definitely, to it than the uh, than the other did. Yeah, um, and it's there's a little maltiness in this that mm -hmm. I don't think the red IPA had. Just no. a little tiny yeah. bit of malty. Smooths the it smooths the finish over on it. <clears throat> and as you can see now, as I drink it down some, the uh, the head is is falling just a little, but it's still almost two fingers. And there's a lot of really fluffy, yeah, really resilient, stubborn lacing just sticking. My light doesn't promote good vision of this, but there's some really nice lacing around that. Mm. Pay no attention to the label on the glass. It's just a nice glass that I like to drink out of. Actually, Danny bought these so that we would uh, have one of this tight because these are really nice. And they, like I said, if you can find some glasses like this, and and you are a uh, fan of a good solid head on your beer, I would suggest getting these because yeah. they really do promote a nice solid head. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't have to be really aggressive. You can just pour 45 degrees and you'll still get a pretty uh, killer head on these. Yeah. Yeah, first time I uh, poured into a glass like this, I <laughs> head overflowed on me. I've had it overflow at least once, I know, from uh, in these. Um, now for the rating. Um, for this style of ale, it's a nice bitter ale. Um, I think probably really in like an English bitter style. Mm -hmm. I would, uh, what do you think? Uh, honestly, out of, uh, you know, it reminds me so much of, a, uh, of an IPA. I mean, I'm such a huge fan of uh, 
the hops, the bitterness to it, and everything. Um, but the, that multi sweetness at the end, I'd ha I'd have to give this one. Um, I'd have to give it an eight, honestly. I mean, it's to me, it's that good. It's uh, yeah, that I good. I think so too. I, I'm <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and agree with that an eight. Um, it's it's a very delicious ale, and it was correct in, in saying this is like this is an ale that's not gonna be for everyone. Um, oh yeah. It's yeah. it's it has a bite. And uh, if you don't like this particular style, you probably won't like this one. Yeah. The hops are potent, and the uh, the ale is pretty stout. All in all, pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I've been Brewmaster. This is Danny. You all have a nice night. Cheers.